Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be looking at a scam that I was alerted to via a Discord PM, and this is quite significant, given the amount of views these videos are getting, and the fact that there's a decent amount of effort put into this. So, what exactly is happening? Well, this channel, Geekbone, has made uh, a couple of bogus Minecraft mods. And these are fairly convincing, as we'll get into once we get into the VM. These are not EXEs, these are JAR files. They are valid Minecraft mods with hidden code. So, what exactly is claimed? A hidden duplication method. Now, for those of you who don't play this game, that just means being able to duplicate your items. We'll let this him explain. This method works for 1.21. I had a lot of people asking me in the server you could test this on any server. So, now what you want to do... You want to place the chest on the floor, and I'm using a soaker for this, but y'all can use pretty much everything. By the way, you can only do one item, so that's why I'm telling y'all to use like a soaker, because then y'all can do a lot more. So right here we got five totems, 14 diamonds, and three splash potions. Okay, so we're going to take this soaker. And what y'all want to do, y'all want to open the chest, drag the soaker box, make sure you drag it, and then you want to log the server. So that's going to unload the chunk, right? So now what y'all want to do, go on the donut SMP again, and now you're going to want to take the, the circuit box to your inventory and type on the chat dot do. It's going to say end of stream. Now that is where his fake mod comes in, and in the video he's and going to rejoin and he's server. going to have two uh, as alleged evidence of the truth. Uh, see, I see right here I have one circuit box in my, my shit and I have another one right here. Now, I believe this is actually based on a Minecraft glitch that did exist at some point in history but doesn't work anymore. So, of course, like many scams, there's some element of truth here. And these comments are all fake. Now, the way you can tell is the order of the comments will usually be very suspicious. We'll have a bunch all in one day, and then suddenly, maybe you get one or two, but this isn't, these comments do not match uh, the activity we're seeing in the view chart, where this video is getting a thousand views a day. It's pretty unusual to gain a thousand views with no comments. Of course, since YouTube hit dislikes, we don't know how many people disliked this video, uh, but I can imagine it would be a substantial amount, because if you have 14,000 views and your video is well received, uh, generally speaking, you end up with more. Oh, that's a bit... Uh, that might be because I Google translated something. There's also a Reddit post by user proposal 2410 who says they asked the owner of Jupe Injector Geekbone and he said it was indeed UI Utils tools. However, it injects the DLL of UI Utils into the game to make it easier. Now, what's weird is this Reddit user has never posted anything else anywhere. And this reply was posted uh, over a month later, which is really odd. I can't find where to download it. Now, let's see. Have you ever put? No. Uh, let's just double check him right. Yeah, you've also never posted anywhere else. It deletes itself after asking. So this earlier version must be in the Xero batch file. Same, I would say don't run random batch files from the internet. Uh, so these two people were probably already victimized. So uh, we've now got this jar file. And we can also go further back because it looks like the older downloads try a couple of them out. Despite all claiming to be 1.21 fa fabric uh, compatible. This one is actually called uh, Geek Bones Benefit. So we'll download a couple of these and see what they have to offer. Here we've got JDGUI, which is a, a nice uh, user interface for a Java decompiler. Now that we've got our tool open, we can go to downloads, and we can actually open what we're after. So let's take a look at the latest one first of all. Now the first thing you'll notice, although this could be for honest reasons, given this is the kind of utility you might want to cloak, not that I think any Minecraft anti-cheat actually works that way. So chat screen mix in example client mix in intermediary so we've got it looks like everything is in the wtf slash optifine folder we've got optifine.class hello fabric world and the mix in we've got an example mixing class and here is where the actual entry point comes so if we send a message that equals dot dupe this is where the code that we were expecting drops and here we do end up getting an end of stream so so far we haven't found the obvious red flag although it is very obvious from how this is designed that it would not duplicate items so it is definitely fake but now we've got to try and find evidence of of malice now let's look at the older versions as well 
like this Geek Bones benefit. Oh, wait a second. I don't think this is... I, I Okay, I'd gotten very confused, because I, I was thinking JNIC was a completely different tool than what we actually uh, discovered in there. This is Java Native Obfuscator. Okay, that makes more sense, uh, given this is allegedly malicious. So let's just validate that's what's going on. Let's download a JNIC protected jar and just compare. Dev.jnic. Yep, uh, that is exactly the same as the one that we got here. Yeah, there, there's no there's no reason for a legitimate Minecraft mod to be using such a tool. Now, let's see if VirusTurtle has ever seen this .dat file before. If it hasn't, then we're going to be in for quite a bit of work to try and recover it. Because it's going to be cryptid. Okay, so our last ditch effort, since KVM doesn't support uh, this on Windows, as far as I can tell, is Titanium GL. Titanium GL is a project that essentially allows for software emulation of OpenGL. The performance will be absolutely miserable, but it doesn't even matter. Well, it seems like there is actually a newer OpenGL emulation library, so we're going to try this one. And we're going to assume uh, that is Windows Defender, which I have so many different flags to disable, but it still doesn't disable, uh, being its typical self and flagging uh, the homeless files as malware and the malware as homeless. And we did, in fact, get Minecraft to run without graphics acceleration. <laughs> I'm just curious how, how this runs before we actually get into what we're uh, testing. Wait a second. It's actually shockingly... That, that's insane. <laughs> it actually runs. Uh, of course, I mean, the, the CPU that it's running on has a lot of cores and is very expensive, but still, that that's actually kind of cool. Okay, so now let's get back to what we're testing. Now we've installed the mod and we watch a uh, task manager for anything fishy. Oh, and that's weird. Okay, so we obviously installed Fabric wrong, but these are both... Uh, so there are, in fact, two mods embedded in that file. Okay. Yeah, to me, the idea that I have to install fabric-api in fabric is kind of weird, but okay, after doing that, everything's all good. Yeah, oh, okay, the mods are loading. Now we get to watch for suspicious processes. Now let's, I'm going to close everything in the background so that we have less noise. Oh, PowerShell. Oh, that is bad. So the malware has already executed and a collection of what appear to be unsigned uh, binaries that have the same name as, uh, let's just, uh, let's just elevate it. The text for me, because of course I'm gonna, I'm gonna scale it on YouTube, is pretty much unreadable because it's so small. Uh, ever since uh, that ran, so let's see. Okay, now that is my CMD. So where we can also use the procmon trick if we need to. I think we'll just restart Minecraft and see what's going on. And as always, if you're interested in learning the intricacies of malware analysis and reverse engineering, please check out my school where we go in depth into all of the methods that I use. Of course, given that we have a camera, we can also uh, just capture the command line like so. And we actually found the file that that was executing out of now. So we know that this is calling a service host.bat, which is a huge file, which is also a massive red flag. Well, these are actually... Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, this is probably ultimately calling a .NET payload, but let's just go over to virus total and confirm that. Batch file is also unseen to virus total, and all of this executes the moment the game does. So the fake uh, dupe has nothing to do with it. But given we have it installed, we can also test uh, that functionality or lack thereof. Oh, the game crashed. Well, it doesn't matter at this point. We have everything we need. Now, I'm pretty sure I've actually seen uh, this pattern before in a cryptor. So after we execute it, uh, we get this and calls a DLL. And the sofa seems to still be running, and then it goes for checking the hard disk. 
So, uh, what are we doing here? Well, uh, if my assumption about the obfuscator is right, uh, the pieces of real batch file are going to be in between the equal signs and percents, because those variables have to be set. Okay, now after struggling a bit, uh, I realized that ultimately what I would have to do to deobfuscate this would be write a batch parser in order to extract everything, and that would have taken quite a bit of time. But lucky for me, I happened to search on GitHub and I found something really cool. Dissect Malware Batch Deobfuscator. This project does exactly what we need, and here is the results of running it. Here is our anti-analysis, and then we start setting these variables. And now we have set this to set. These are these are going to be a part of the PowerShell. And the final phase down here, I'm guessing, is going to actually be some sort of shell code that the PowerShell is going to decrypt. Given this script is still uh, a bit of a pain, uh, let's simply kill the anti-analysis and try running it again on a sandbox. Also, turn at echo on instead of off. Let's see, uh, since that did execute, uh, let's see what it ended up doing. In theory, we, we might be able to break the uh, anti-analysis quite easily by just changing a few of these. Because we know uh, from looking at this that these are from the band model number, and if one of them doesn't match, uh, that should be game over. Oh, so we actually have to get rid of the WDC. Okay, well, we can do that. But that actually means this anti-analysis is broken because it's going to refuse to run on any system that has a Western Digital hard drive. So even if I were to run this on bare metal on my computer, it wouldn't work. So good work. Oh, and uh, it worked. We beat the anti-analysis. Click, click, click. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm guessing that's like rap lyrics, because that, that's what that's what the skids these days are into. Oh, oh, that is funny. Well, we we beat the anti-analysis. That is absolutely dreadful. So I mean, there's a lot of things I could say about this scam that were well done. The anti-analysis was the only real screw up, uh, given that banning Western Digital. It's just way too broad. Some sandboxes might fake Western Digital, but they're not the only ones. I, otherwise, this is a pretty clever scam. Especially the levels of obfuscation they went to. The fact that the mod does actually add the command that it should. It's, it's, yeah, I can see how some will fall for this. Hopefully, at least under this brand, we are going to put this to an end now. And let's just terminate this session to see everything that Triage has caught. That's going to be all for this video for now. Please do leave a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, that's all from me for now. Bye.